Hi, I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation and I'm joined here by deer biologist Jason Isabel. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to properly dispose of a deer carcass. So Jason, tell us first and off, why is there a certain way there we have to follow how to properly dispose of a deer carcass? Yeah, so we have chronic wasting disease uh, has been detected in a number of areas in Missouri. So it's really important for hunters to properly dispose of the carcass after they process it just so that if those deer happen to be positive for CWD that we're not uh, spreading the disease out there on the landscape. So tell us how we can properly dispose of a deer carcass. Yeah, sure, so for those hunters that process deer themselves, uh, when they get done processing it, they have the meat separated from the rest of the carcass. The best way to dispose of that is just to dispose of it in a certified landfill. So bag it up and put it out with your trash so that it ends up in a landfill and the, that those unused parts out, are out there on the landscape. What about burying it? Is that an option? Can, can hunters do that as well? They can, you know, many people don't have that, that option to be able to do that. Um, I always tell folks the first course of action is to get them in a certified landfill. Um, if they're not able to do that for whatever reason, yeah, being able to bury them would be the next best option. That way the carcass parts aren't just laying there on the surface where other deer could interact with them should that deer happen to be positive for CWD. So you say CW, chronic wasting disease chronic wasting disease, CWD, could spread if you don't dispose of the deer carcass properly. Tell us if you don't. I mean, what if you let it, leave it lay? Like you harvest it, you collect the meat, and you get out of there. Is that going to affect, have a problem with that? So I consider that like the, the, the third option. So if you can't dispose of it in a certified landfill, um, if you're not able to bury it, the next best thing would be to just leave those parts at the site of harvest. And so if that deer happened to be positive leaving those parts, you know, eventually another deer is going to come along and be curious and start sniffing around the carcass. And that is a way that they could pick up, uh, become infected with CWD. Um, the reason that's a last resort is because you are leaving those parts out there in the landscape. But the reality is, if that deer was positive and it was harvested on that area, there's probably going to be other deer that are positive in that area, or certainly a higher likelihood that there would be positive deer there compared to some other area. So at least by leaving them at the site of harvest, you're leaving that deer on the same area where it existed anyway. The, the, really the worst thing you could do would be to take those remains and then take them somewhere else and deposit them out there on the landscape. Whereas if, those, if that deer had been positive, you're depositing those, those, those parts of the, um, that deer into an area where it could come, on, come into contact and spread the disease to a new area. So really, I think the big question I think a lot of people would wanna know is why, why do we, how long does CWD stay with a deer if it is positive? I mean, if a deer is harvested and we, you know, we get all the meat off of it and we just leave it where it lies, uh, lays there. So tell, tell us a little bit about how long does CWD, if it is positive, how long would it stay there? And why would moving parts to another area spread CWD? Does the disease always stay with that or how, wh why is that? Yeah, so the highest concentration of the infectious prions that cause the disease are going to be in the central nervous system, brain, and spinal column. Mm -hmm. And the agent that causes CWD, the misfolded prion protein, is really hard to degrade. And so it can remain infectious in the environment for, for probably decades. So if you've got parts of a deer that you're not using and you dispose of them on the landscape, those infectious prions are going to be there for a long time and they're going to leach into the soil. They can be uptaken by plants. And so it's not as if they're disintegrating or uh, disappearing quickly. They are there for a long time. So any deer that would come into contact with that carcass or even long after that carcass is gone, come in contact with the soil or the plants that are growing there could spread the disease. So to help us, um, kind of what we're getting at, how can hunters help us manage the spread as this disease? Yeah, so one of the, the way this disease can spread is through the in inadvertent actions of hunters that just are unaware of the carcass transport regulations that we have in the CW management zone or unaware of the way of the proper way to dispose of a carcass. So I always tell folks if you're processing a deer, take the parts to a certified landfill, get them in the trash, that way you know that they're not out there on the landscape if that deer happened to be positive. Um, and then as we talked about, if you can't do that, bury them so that they're not laying there on the ground. And then worst case scenario, if you have no other options, at least leave them there where you harvested the deer and do not transport those parts uh, to a different area and leave them out on the landscape. Real quick to wrap it up, say I harvest a deer and I want to get my deer sampled for CWD. What would you recommend? Bring the whole carcass to get sampled? Taking it, because we know it's the neck, but should, would you encourage them just to bring the neck and the head? What would you recommend that's probably the best thing to do for that? Um, 
It, it, it depends a little bit on where they live in the state in terms of what their options are going to be for sampling. They, they, could, do, they could do either. Um, we have a number of voluntary sampling opportunities located throughout the state. Um, and a hunter that shoots a deer anywhere in the state any time during the entire deer season is able to take that head to, a, uh, to an approved sampling station. So uh, they can do that. They just would have to be mindful um, if they're in a, in a management zone uh, mm -hmm. county then mandatory sampling applies in some of those counties on opening weekend. Outside of that is not mandatory, but there's, if they can go to our website, there's all sorts of voluntary uh, sites that they can look at and, and go to. Awesome, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jason. And I wanna echo what he said. If you'd like to learn more about CWD and carcass disposal and all the fun facts about CWD and all the great information you need to know before you head out, please check out our website at mdc.mo.gov forward slash CWD or check out the Deer and Turkey Regulations Hunting Information Booklet that provides all the information you would need to know about CWD. Thanks and have a great rest of the day.